this uh, pre-Olympic World Cup. I know a lot of y'all gonna ask, why are you in the uniform? Why are you ain't playing? I'm gonna be explaining all that very soon in the next video coming up. Maybe not the next one. I'm gonna be explaining all that really soon for y'all. I was talking about doing this video in August of 2023. I think it's safe to say I've been avoiding it uh, for way too long. Before we address the title of this video, this is not scripted. There's nothing written down. The reason, the reason I haven't posted anything for so long or anything of this topic is because I've been thinking about and overthinking and, and second guessing everything about this video for way too long. And I just decided I just got to do it. I just got to do it. I just got to do it. No more, no more avoiding it. No more excuses. I just got to turn the camera on and do it. So here we are. I want this video to be void of all the cliches, all the stuff that comes with videos like this. I want to take a different approach. I want to use my situation, my story as a way for you to look within yourself and be motivated or, or to feel inspired by anything that is being said to be able to apply it to your own life and in whatever way that you feel is necessary. I've been very transparent in my journey as a professional basketball player, dating as far back as, uh, I guess my first year, well, all this really started in the pandemic for me. Um, when I started recording videos and stuff, you could go scroll back and see all those embarrassing moments and stuff that <laughs> I, I probably, well, I would never do today. I would just would not, but you know, I was a young, young guy just turning on the camera trying to figure it out and you know doing things that i thought was fun and everybody was bored during during uh the pandemic so we were all trying to figure it out right this is where this journey for me has started as a professional basketball player in spain told my story a lot of times in, in that area um i went to the naia had a pretty good career there was able to sign professionally we able to play for my national team for the bahamas all that good stuff we'll cover. Things went on. I moved from Spain to France and elevated my career and made a big change for me in terms of, I guess, all things pro basketball, location, all the above. And it was just one of the best moments of my life making that transition. You know, it was during the pandemic, so wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get another job. But, you know, by the grace of God and everything happening during that time, I was able to get a job and, and move on to France. We were playing literally with nobody in the stands. Like there was like people trickling in and out of our games. But, you know, this was during a, a tough time in the world. So understandable. But it was just a really good situation for me to start starting my journey of more serious professional basketball. Fast forward now to 2022. I'm on my second team in France. And this is when things started to really get a little bit serious for me in terms of my health. I have always had a problem with my left knee. Um, if you've watched my story, I told the story when I was 16, I broke my tibia bone and it caused me to have arthritis in my left knee. So every time I would go to do my physicals, anytime for these new teams, you know, the doctors would be like, oh, like you have a, a, a strange looking knee or, or this and that and that. And, and I would just, you know, deal with it because I was so used to playing with the pain and playing through the pain that it was just becoming normal. All I would do is strengthen the area and just hope that um, everything would be okay. But this was the season when um, I guess the deterioration of my cartilage have, has got, had gotten so bad that um, I was starting to have burn, bone spurs. Um, so there was pieces of my cartilage and pieces of my bone that was chipping off because I was hitting it together so hard, I guess. And it was causing me to have bone spurs and, and stuff. So at the end of my uh, second year in France, I had a surgery that was done that took me out for a little bit. That was when I really started opening my eyes and realizing that, yo, I might have to start considering something, something else if my knee can't hold up. 2022 passes. Now I'm on the 2023 sign with my third team in France. Things are going really well. It wasn't the best season in terms of my relationship with the coach or whatever the case may be, but it wasn't horrible, if you know what I mean. I, I did my job and, and did well enough to sign a fourth contract. But during the summer, which is now 2023, I was experiencing more pain even after 
the season ended, I, I had felt my best in a very long time. My body felt good. My body looked good. My, my legs were getting stronger. It was always hard for me to work on my legs because of my arthritis. And I was able to find ways to strengthen it without irritating it. Went and played some ball during the summer and the pain just like got really bad. And I don't think it's because of me playing in the summer, but it definitely was a part of it. But this was also the summer when the Bahamas national team, we were um, on our journey of trying to make the Olympics. I made the team in the summer, and this is last year now, 2023, made the team, but I was not feeling feeling my best. I, I knew that something wasn't right with my knee, but I also knew the trip was coming up and I, I wanted to just do everything I could to be ready for that trip. And, and I did. I made the team, was able to be on the same team of uh, with guys like DeAndre Aiden, Buddy Hill, Kai Jones, Eric Gordon, some really, really, really talented NBA players that I was able to, you know, be on the same same um, floor as. And it was such an amazing experience and amazing blessing at the time that, you know, I almost didn't even think of in the moment. Now, I know that I'm not feeling my best. I expressed it to the coaching staff and I was letting them know, yo, like, I don't know what's happening, just not feeling feeling great. Like, I don't know how the knee is going to hold up uh, and all that stuff. So I was able to get through the first day of training camp, second day of training camp, third day of training camp, played in one game against Kansas, but sparingly because obviously they had already known that I wasn't feeling my best. I made a decision at that moment that I could no longer sustain probably playing in a whole professional season uh, as a basketball player anymore. It was an abrupt decision, and it was one that I guess I look back sometimes and wonder if I made the decision too soon or if I should have, or if I just made the right decision in general. It was just a moment of frustration that was brewing up for such a long time. As you can imagine, like I, I, I'd been hearing from doctors every year, they're like, hey, listen, now your knee is bad, is in a bad shape. You, you won't be able to play for much longer than maybe two, three more years professionally, like yeah, your your cartilage is, is like really damaged. The bone, your, your kneecap is, is really damaged. Like you're gonna need a knee replacement. Like these are the things that's lingering in my head. And in that moment, all of those thoughts, uh, when I was literally sitting in the hotel room, all those hit me and I just was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. Like, I, I don't know what, what I'm gonna do yet. I don't know where I'm gonna go, but I think I have to make a decision, a long-term decision that that might suck in the short term, but hopefully in the long term it all makes sense for me. And I did that. I, I went downstairs to the lobby, met with the head coach, Chris DeMarco, one of the one of the um, assistants for the Warriors. Had a really good conversation with him and letting him know my decision. And I just told him, like, you know, I I that's probably one of the hardest. And worst, worst conversations I'm probably going to have, but I need to have it. And we had a conversation about me just um, not playing basketball anymore. And he asked me, well, if you don't play basketball, what, what, what do you want to do after? And I didn't have an answer at the time, but he was like, how about this? And I, and I respect Chris forever for this, and I'm forever grateful for him for that. He was like, how about this? Because at this time, I was telling him, like, you could just send me home as training camp. You could bring another player, just replace me, and you'll have another player, you know, at least on the team that, that's healthy. He said, no. He said, how about this? We're going to keep you on the trip. We're going to put you on the coaching staff, and we're going to start working with you and, 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 and helping you transition into coaching. I don't want to skip ahead too fast, but to sum up that part, I stayed with the national team uh, on the coaching staff. Um started to learn about coaching, started to, like I said, shadow the whole coaching staff. I learned so much about what goes into coaching, like the behind the scenes stuff of how important it is like to prepare for these teams and all the stuff that you do. And a lot of people don't know that coaches, coaching don't stop. Like when you're a player, you show up to practice, you show up to weights, you go home. When you're a coach, you have to make sure that they prepared for practice, prepared for weights, show up to those things and afterwards break it down, do all the it's a lot more that goes into coaching, in my opinion. I was learning all of that on that trip. Anyway, the Bahamas, we went on to, to win our tournament. This year comes now, 2024. I was able to go with the Bahamas national team full-time as a coach 
for the first time in which we um, competed in Valencia, Spain, played against Giannis. We played against, sheesh, who else? Vucevic. Who else did we play against? Uh, uh, Hernan Gomez. Like, we played against Spain, Finland, Poland. Like, just an amazing experience. But now as a coach, I'm working, I'm doing everything. I was doing logistics stuff. I was doing video. I was doing a bunch of stuff. So it was it was so, so amazing. But there was a method behind all of that madness, right? In the back of my mind, as I'm playing basketball, I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do? How do I how do I transition? What is what is my next step? I know I want to be around basketball. I studied forensic accounting in college. I could go be an accountant somewhere, never probably be around basketball again, never do anything like that. But that's not what I wanted to do. Basketball afforded me some resources. Basketball afforded me time. Basketball afforded me freedom to be able to venture out and try a bunch of different things, learn what I like. Like I do music, I do photography. I, I was traveling a lot. I, I had a clothing brand. I, I'm writing a book. I wanna, I, I'm working on a foundation that it allowed me to do so many things that I was able to see that I don't want to be, let's say, an accountant right now. That Like, no, if I want to be an accountant, that means everything that I'm trying to accomplish now just didn't work out. And now I need a big show I, I could eat. So I got to do that. But that wasn't the case. Uh, and, and I'm really grateful for that. So I said all of that and, and, and broke down that story to just not only give the all the actual facts because i always been dodging it and running away from it on why you haven't seen any more game day vlogs you haven't seen any more media days is because i'm no longer a professional basketball player that's simply put what it is i'm no longer that i'm 28 years old which is um, the time when you pretty much enter in your prime as a basketball player between 27 30 like those are your prime years you're figuring it out you're trying to you're trying to figure it out like i said and I'm no longer that. But it took me a long time last year, 2023, when I stopped playing on that trip. This affected me for a very long time. But in the midst of it, I didn't take a time to really sit down and, and really think about everything that happened, like the transition of not playing anymore to now figuring out what I'm going to do, the transition of living in Europe and, and traveling and all the, you know, pleasures that came with that. And like I said, trying to figure that out. I didn't have a moment to just say like, all right, like all that, all that is done now, what next? Took me a long time, but in the back of my mind, I knew that I wanted to be around the game. I wanted to, to still, to still at least be present in basketball. And the thing I didn't mention, and, and clearly, like I said, this is not scripted, so I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest. The thing I didn't mention was when I got hurt and before I pretty much stopped playing, I had signed a fourth contract in France that I had to end up calling my, my club up and telling them I wouldn't be able to fulfill anymore. And I'm talking the coach was distraught because obviously he was excited to have me. I was excited to to be be there. It was going to be a a place where I probably would have been the number one option on, on offense and I would have been able to get a lot of touches and raise my stock and, and really elevate my career. And I was really looking forward to that. But, you know, the the knee thing happened and I had to pivot. So in the midst of trying to figure out what was next, I was thinking about my options and what I want to do, I guess, um, with my life and where I, what direction I could see myself going in. And I knew I wanted to be close to basketball in some way. I wanted to raise my knowledge and, and increase my knowledge in basketball and, and see how I can impact somebody else, home, uh, especially in the Bahamas, younger athletes, whatever it might be. The opportunity came at Chipola College. So Chipola College is where I'm currently at right now. It is one of the top junior colleges in the country and it has a rich basketball history as a legendary coach, has um, pretty much everything I need to be ordered to, to, to be able to be around the game, to be able to study something brand new and figure out what I want to do during this time. So I'm currently in school. I, I study um, sports management at this moment. I'm looking forward to what the future might hold for me in this in this new, I guess, journey of my life, this new chapter. Nonetheless, I feel like 
I made the right decision for me long term. Basketball is my life. Um, it's, it's what I want to do. It's what I love to do. It's what I wake up every single day thinking about. And to be able to still be around it in a different capacity, coaching and working with these players and, you know, encouraging them and, and showing them things that I've learned through, through my career and stuff that I've done, it's been really fulfilling and it's been something that I, I don't take for granted. Seeing the way you impact these these guys and, and seeing where they could go in their lives. And that means a lot to me because I, I care about all of them. I, all, I want them all to succeed and I know that they will. I hope when they look back on everything, they'll say, you know, Coach Will might've been a little tough on me. He might've been, you know, one of those guys that held me accountable a little more than maybe I would like, cause that's what I do. But um, he kept me going every day. He motivated me and he made me better. At the end of the day, that, that's what I want to do. And I figured out finally that I think that's exactly where I wanna, what I want to do. And that's, and that's exactly why I'm happy with where I'm at and, and where, I'm, where I'm going. So as I continue to study, as I continue to learn, having the opportunity to be a part of something like this has been amazing. Yeah, I, I hope that you guys know that this isn't the end of my YouTube stuff. Like it's not, it's just, I had to figure some stuff out and I don't ever want to just put something out there just to put it out. I don't ever want to just put out garbage. You know what I mean? I, I take pride in everything I do and y'all have meant the world to me and, and y'all have no idea how much your messages during this time uh, has meant to me. I've always seen them. I really just want to say thank you. You know what I mean? Just thank you. I'm still going to be doing my videos. Still going to be trying to, like I said, figure this thing called life out. But in the meantime, just know that I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm well taken care of. I'm definitely blessed and grateful to God himself for keeping me and, and, and helping me during such a, you know, weird time to find a place that I feel comfortable, find a place that I feel like is elevating me now in this new journey as a coach. I, I think I got through it. I think I did it. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long this video <laughs> probably is, but I know that it probably is long and I apologize. But whatever you take away from this, I hope that it can inspire you and help you out as well. And I hope that you guys continue to follow my journey in, in this new capacity. Um, my love for this game will never change. And my love for making videos hasn't changed either. I, I just needed to you know, have this moment to be transparent and to let you guys know everything that's going on before I do, do take that next step. You know what I mean? And the next step in content creation, the next step in everything I do. So, uh, I guess this is it. I don't want to ramble on too much longer. Y'all know I could talk a little bit. So I appreciate the love. I appreciate y'all just for being, just for being here and sticking with me through everything. Um, the ones that are still here, I appreciate you. And till the next video, ladies and gentlemen, um, I love y'all to death as always. Appreciate y'all. Peace.